Fam, what's up? Welcome back to the CEO Post Podcast, where you get the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. We are sitting down with two real estate rock stars, not only real estate rock stars, they've been crushing it actually for the last decade, been partnering up and, and different ventures. They come from the uh, from the promoter, uh, club promoter space, and then they jumped into real estate a couple of years ago, and it's insane what they've been able to do uh, over such a short period of time. So we have uh, Sergio and Jason with us, um, and um, and like the, uh, it's the the magnitude of the stuff that you guys have done over the last couple of years is, is I mean it's it's pretty it's pretty sick. Uh, we right before we clicked record, I, I messed up a couple of things. It was like a little weird, but we're back on track now. So um, I'm happy to have you guys. I know I understand it's your first first podcast, so I'm honored uh, to have you in the podcast. Kind of breaking that uh, that ground for you uh, on the podcast uh, circuit. So um, we are we're also neighbors. I didn't know we were neighbors. We just yeah. found, I found that out. So you guys uh, started. Uh, uh, in real estate in 2020, um, uh, right. just a couple of um, uh, 2021, January 2021, yeah. uh, you did over 100 deals the first year, right? And it hit over $4 million, built a portfolio of about 15 properties. Um, then year two, you kind of repeated the 100 deal thing. Um, and then, you know, picked up, you know, more of that consistency. Now you're nationwide, you're expanding in a couple of different, uh, you know, um, uh, states, which you mentioned right before we jumped in. So I want to, I want to break into all of that stuff, uh, see how you've been able to put it all together and, uh, and really kind of like what the journey has been on, on not just the real estate part, but the partnership that you guys have been able to sustain for over a decade. So with that being said, welcome to the show. I'm happy to have you guys. Thanks Thanks for for having us. Um, kick it off. Give, give me a rundown. Give, give me a little bit of a perspective from you guys' uh, uh, side. Uh, well, so yeah, we met, we met through the promotion world. Um, yeah. I was a nightclub promoter. He was actually a manager at a club I was promoting at. And uh, I'll be honest, I always tell this story that we didn't really get along at the beginning. Yeah. Um, he didn't want a promoter there. You know, he didn't think he needed one. But over time, we kind of saw value in each other. Yeah. And just kind of built a relationship from there. Eventually started working together. And, uh, you know, fast forward, you know, I think it's been a little over 10 years maybe. Was it was it here in the valley? Like yeah, here in the valley. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it was around uh, 2012, 13 that we kind of met. Yeah. And yeah, it was kind of like a rocky start, but little by little, kind of. <laughs> yeah, became friends. I ended up being my best man at my wedding when I got married. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's one of those partnerships that I think like will probably just go on forever. Yeah. No, it, it's it's incredible, man. A lot of times we like we'll find uh, um, just. You know, somebody else will fill the, the 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 weaknesses that we have, and I think this is what happens. I see it, you know, quite a bit when it comes to partnerships, especially when I come in and do consulting on, on businesses that have multiple heads in it. Um, it it's um, they usually start off, you know, rocky, right? Because we're seeing uh, a lot of times when we see, you know, the uh, like the strengths of somebody, they're usually weaknesses that we have on our end, and ego gets in, right? Like, okay, this person is really good at that, and subconsciously we're having that like that inner dialogue um, where we have that competition, you know, kind of rising because we're trying to get better at certain things um and that other person you know kind of carries the uh the other side right but that's where you have great partnerships when they complement each other do you guys feel like you guys do that 100 yeah. percent. i think yeah. yeah i think with me i'm like the creative add yeah um i always kind of like joke around that thousand miles an hour kind of guy yeah no no empathy don't really care what anybody's thinking like, yeah you know, just figure <laughs> it out he's super empathetic operationally minded yeah. like you know like if i come up with a crazy plan he's gonna execute it to a t you know, and yeah. I think that's where kind of our relationship really works out that, you know, we're yeah. able to kind of add the yin yeah. and the yang of that. And I think you're right, 100 percent right. Like, you know, we just kind of have the opposite traits that kind of we yeah. have in each other. Isn't that crazy? Right. Like, and I mean, again, it, it's it happens often in good partnerships. Like usually when you have uh, people under like they, they kick it off really well right out of the gates, usually because they're they're kind of sharing the same strengths and then they have the same type of conversations in terms of weaknesses right. and that sort of thing. Right. So like, oh, we get along like I like you. Right. But in business, like you got to have that uh, that yin to your yang. Like, if, uh, for example, if, if I'm, I'm not really good at systems. Right. Or something like you got to have somebody who's who's covering that end and, yeah, and then just kind of seeing the uh, the. Um, um, the, the fallout, the fallout of, of, you know, perhaps we're yeah. not, not as strong. I think that's a big thing in entrepreneurship. Yeah, it happens a lot. We still bump heads from time to time, right? No, but it's good. I, yeah, it's I a normal think, thing. I think, uh, we know when it's like, Hey, like I, I got to sit passenger on this one or I'll yeah. let you drive on this one. Right. Yeah. And I think we're able to figure that out as we go along. It's like, yeah. Hey, like, let me, let me take the steering wheel. Trust me yeah. on this one. Right. Like I know where we're going here and vice versa. You know, not letting the ego get involved, I guess, in the whole thing. Yeah, I yeah. think even to this point, like 10 years working together or more, um, we've never really had that defined roles. Like, you're the CEO, you're yeah. the CFO, COO. Like, we've never used those titles. 
Yeah. It's just like, hey, you're in charge of that. You're in charge of that. Great. Like, and, yeah. you know, I do a lot of the marketing, so he lets, he trusts me to do that, right? Yeah. You know, we'll have the high level meetings of what's going on, but he's not in there every day. Again, with the operational stuff, when the disposition and sales, I don't bug him every day, like what's going on with that, because I know what my role is and he knows what his role is. But, you know, when somebody comes in, like, well, who's in charge? And it's kind of like we're both pointing at each other, like, yeah. <laughs> like neither one of us. Yeah, like, the, goes like this, yeah. right? Yeah. No, it's good, man. It, it, it's at this point, I mean, you have track record, you have trust built. Uh, and like you understand, OK, it's almost like, a, you know, that synergy, right, that that needs to happen. I've had uh, partnerships before and and I'm super reluctant, man, to, to partner up with anybody just because they've we've clashed. Right. And I, like, I understand there can be great partnerships. I just haven't had the uh, the uh, um, like the connection yet with somebody who's who's in alignment, you know, in terms of, you know, ethical and then in terms of, you know, the the, the tenacity needed for the business and that sort of thing. So yeah. so to me, it's been one of those things where like, man, it, like it'd be a lot easier if you found somebody who's sharing, you know, 50 50, right? 50 50 or the, the risk and responsibility and the, the workload and everything else. Um, so, I mean, I'll do JVs. I'll partner up on on projects and deals and stuff like that all day long. Right. right. But to kind of, you know, jump into into this marriage business. It's, it's like because it really is right it's like it turns, into, it's a big, it turns into a marriage yeah. um it's just different man i like that dynamic i like uh, seeing how that works especially when partners have been together for for such a long time and and uh you change so something really interesting you you happened with you guys you guys spent 10 years in this one industry right. where you knew it you were comfortable with you grew into it and, and you know that kind of you know that was the space that you knew right and then you jumped into something else really quick uh, not, needless to say, one of the most competitive, uh, you know, industries out there, which is real estate. Um, and you just, I mean, you took off running. You you ended up crushing it year one. You guys have, like, you guys understand how different that is, right? How, like, how, how special that is, right? To have that. We didn't because we didn't really do a lot of networking or talking. To yeah. We just kind of did what we were taught and, like, yeah. fi- and figured out along the way. We made a lot of mistakes, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, kind of looking outside, people do tell us like, Hey, like you guys crushed in the first year. I was like, well, I thought everybody was doing this. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, so still kind of like one of those things, I think, you know, kind of imposter syndrome where we kind of look and we see all the faults in our business. You know, we still know that we're in an infancy stage. Like, you know, we're going on year three, like we're still learning, we're still making mistakes. So like, you know, I hate giving advice sometimes because I'm thinking like, well, like, you know, like, you know, more than me or you've been doing it longer than me. I mean, we have some more people that work for us have been doing wholesaling longer than us. Yeah. But I, yeah, we definitely bring something, I think, you know, the different, I guess, or, yeah. you know, whatever that is. Well, and, and that's that's the thing, right? Like, we don't know what we don't know as we're going through the process. One of, one of the things that also that was mentioned, like, before we kicked it off was was the uh, the networking part. Uh, when you start having more conversations, you actually start, you know, kind of raising your head up and seeing what, what's going on with the world. Um, and you start to learn a lot of different things, right? And realize a lot of different yeah. things. Um, it, it uh, In your guys' case, I think it helped you guys because one of the things that happens is, you know, uh, quite a bit is, is shiny object syndrome. Right. I mean, you picked an idea and then you went to town, you kept your head down for, you know, that year, two years, and you were, you know, just honed in. Yeah. Um, hence the results. Yeah. Right? That definitely happened to us because we were, you know, we we're, were just grinding it out at that time. He yeah. was like, hey, like, we need to network more. I was like, dude, I don't give a fuck about what everybody's doing. Yeah. Like, I'm here. I got fucking 30 cold callers. Yeah. Bro. We're fucking texting 20,000 texts per day. Yeah. Like, like we got to get to these leads, right? And we yeah. have a, we have a, at that time, what, we had about five sales guys at the time? Yeah. Four or five sales it, it guys It varied. It went from three to five from just up and down. Yeah. Right. And stuff. But, you know, those institutions were buying at such a high level that you're just like, dude, like, it's like. Walk, walk me through that process, man. I like, uh, guys, it, it's, how did you go from starting in 2021, January 2021, to having, you know, five sales guys and 30 cold callers? And like, where, how did that leap happen? So I think um, when we first started, we were kind of just playing around with it, right? Um, we were fixing and flipping. I was still running the nightclub industry, uh, the nightclub promotions um, business. He pretty much had took a step back, and he was just fixing and flipping. And we were doing good. Financially, we were doing well at that point. So he just dabbled in fixing and flipping. And when COVID happened, I was personally, it was like, I had some money. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to buy some trucks and trailers. It's kind of, I had some background in that, right? Yeah. My boys are doing really good. They're shipping for Amazon locally here. Um, they're doing really well financially. I was like, let's do that. He was like, cool, let's go do that. And then our buddy was like, dude, why are you going to start a whole new business, learn to a whole new business model? I was like, transportation is brutal too. Fixing and flipping and, and the same <clears> one. And at that time, we had bought it. Our first flip from Carlos Reyes. Yeah. And I think uh, we had saw an assignment fee. I was like, what's this? It was like 20K in our flip. We made like 15K total. <laughs> I was like, you know, how do you make so much money when we did all the work we put on? Yeah. We put in all the money. But 
looking back at it now, it's like you don't see what he was spending in marketing, yeah. commissions. People don't see that, right? As a fix and flipper, you don't see that. So, right. you know, as, as we get going and, and we're going through that path, uh, we just said, hey, let, let's give this a shot. I had a buddy that was kind of doing it as well. And uh, we just got an office in Armando. We got an office together. It was like, hey, show me what you're doing. I was, you know, I'll show you kind of what I'm going to do. And they was like, dude, just start off with cold callers, hire a sales guy. He's like, I'll help you hire a sales guy. He's like, cool. And we're just dabbling it. And then Sergio came in full time in January 2021. It's like, dude, like, this shit's not working. We got to go <laughs> balls to the wall all in. And we're like, let's do it. Because I was still dabbling. Yeah. I was still thinking nightclubs are going to open back up. I'm going to go back to my industry. Right? Yeah, yeah. And um, January 2021, we said, okay, let's just do this full time. We're gonna let go of the nightclub industry. We're gonna, and we did. That's where we pretty and much. And I will add, we, you know, we grew the company to a seven-figure business, which in the nightclub world for promoters to make that kind of money is yeah. normal. So we were doing pretty well with yeah. the nightclub industry, and we just thought, like, well, how are we gonna make more than a million dollars a year? Yeah, and we only work weekends. Some else, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it just didn't make sense. And we talked to wholesalers, like, well, how much are you guys making? Oh, we're making 10, 20 k a month. And we're and you're working like seven days a week. Like seven days a I, week. I go to the week. I go to the club on the weekend. And at that <laughs> yeah. point, I wasn't even going to the club. He was running it. Yeah. I was at home, kind of like I was just watching fix and flip shows, and that's why I started flipping. I was like, <laughs> I wanted to be like Chip and Joanne, like oh, yeah, go sledgehammer. And I was taking videos with the go break walls and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, oh, this, look, this looks like fun. But yeah, when we came in, I, I think we both realized we're really good marketers. Yeah, and that's what promotions is. Um, prior to that, I worked in the corporate world and I did marketing and operations, so like, yeah. we understood that. So we figured like, well, we're neither one of us is a great salesperson. So we technically never really did acquisitions. That's kind of a step that we skipped. Mm. And we just hired the acquisitions and we just provided them great marketing. And mm. that was one of the reasons we grew so fast. We were always so focused on the marketing and operations. Yeah. So like month one in January, um, we had three cold callers that we had when I came back. Because I was kind of staying at home with the kids because of COVID. Yeah. So they, they went back to school in January. I come in there, just started posting on Instagram, hiring, hiring, hiring. Yeah. Brought three guys in, trained them, got them on the phone. Month one, and he already had one guy in there that was kind of like already kind of starting out. Um, this is cold callers? No, no, these were actual acquisitions. Oh, acquisitions, okay. Yeah, we hired like four cold callers. We just went, we just went all in. We bought everything. Yeah. Four cold callers, a bunch of, bunch of data. You know, we had yeah, like, yeah. the podio, all the stuff we needed. And I think month one, we um, we got a couple stuff on their contracts. I think month February, we made like twenty forty thousand dollars $40,000. By month three, we we're making six figures. By July, we made a million. Yeah. And it was just... Wow. Yeah. And you guys tapped into uh, hedge funds, right? Yeah, we did. And that's when we hit the, the million. We yeah. tapped into hedge funds. So we just got... I, I wanted to we got lucky a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it was hard work. We were in the office working 10 hours a day. We were grinding it out. Yeah. You know, so like that transition just happened really quickly. But, you know, when we made money, like we just throw it back in there. Yeah. More cold callers, more marketing. We went from four to 10 to 15. At the peak, we were doing like 60 cold callers. Yeah. And just wow. That's like a, crazy. Dude, that's, th those yeah. are big numbers. Yeah. Those and are big numbers. I think at our peak, we we're, were texting about 50,000 texts per day. Yeah. 50,000 outbound texts per day. Um, so, yeah. we, The guys had more leads that they could handle at that point. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so they were happy. They're like, dude, like, I got a yeah. crap ton of leads. Like, yeah. Like, and honestly, kind of, we didn't see it at the moment, right? But we were letting so many deals slide through because... We were, we were making money. Yeah. The reality is we were feeding them a lot more leads that they could possibly handle. Mm, yeah, they they were, to follow cherry up. picking, no so, follow-up. Yeah, sort there of was stuff. so yeah. many new leads coming in. I mean, there was like probably 100 per agent coming in, if not more, yeah. per day. Wow. So, like, it was literally, they had a hard time. That's insane. We, we were giving them too much. Yeah. Um, so, but we learned. I mean, we, we toned it down from the peak and kind of dialed it in. We learned. We joined mentorship groups. We kind of, we, we got out there and started learning from the mentor. We didn't do too many like networking, but we did yeah. a couple good mentorship groups that kind of taught us a couple things. Uh, and then we just started doing a little marketing because that was our kind of our strong suit. So we started doing mailers, yeah. we started doing PPC, we started doing, uh, um, we did radio at one point. Um, yeah. <laughs> we did a little bit of yeah. everything. I think the only thing we've never done is TV and billboards. Yeah. But everything else, we tried it and uh, kind of learned from a lot of mistakes. We And I'll, I'll tell you, we blew a lot of money. <laughs> we made like yeah. we blew a ton of we made a ton of money bro like, we always pay the wrong. dump tax we, we yeah. I mean one way or another we're always gonna end up paying dump yeah. tax right and the reality is we shouldn't even bought the 15 rentals the first yeah. year yeah, we had no business buying rentals we were wholesalers but you know people kept saying like oh you're gonna regret not buying rentals so yeah. we rushed and bought a bunch to save on taxes and we did we saved like I mean, a ridiculous amount of tax. We did yeah. the cost segregation. We did all the fancy stuff. Yeah, the, the um, works. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we did it. We saved money on taxes and then went into year two. And then we're like, now we're reluctant landlords. Bought <laughs> <laughs> yeah. houses with pools. We like, you know, we bought stuff yeah. that we shouldn't have bought at yeah. the time. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, you, you grow and you learn, right? But it's always better to to go through, you know, go down that route and be there and then take this this uh, theoretical approach to, to the entire thing, right? right? right. And then just you know, think about what could be, I mean, it's, I've always been a big proponent of like, 
shooting, then, you know, I don't know. It's a, you got to have some direction, right? But right. but I've always shot and then aimed later. Like, sometimes come ba- comes back and bites me in the ass. Sometimes, you know, I kill it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, I mean, it's a, I, for sure, though, it's the fastest way to move forward. Yeah. Like it's through through experience, right? right? As yeah. you're going through it, um, so give me give me uh, I don't know give me maybe two or three things that as you're building this you know big monster of a company you know first couple of years that, what are your biggest challenges? Uh, sales. It's always been sales, right? Because none of us were actually like really negotiation good at. part or because uh, you can- the, that the entire like having to process things of that nature, right? I had my buddy that we teamed up that Armando yeah. is amazing <clears throat> at sales, right? But him like he didn't have a process. He was just good with talking to people. Yeah, he just yeah. shut off the hip. But if I knew if I had someone, I was like, hey, he could close a deal, right? Hey, Mondo, I need help with this deal. Can you help yeah. me close this? Close like, get him on the phone. Like, yeah. you know, I'll talk to him or whatever. Um, so there, I was like, hey, it's obvious we need help with sales. Let's hire a freaking sales trainer, right? Yeah. So I, I bought the John Martinez course, put my guys through that. I went through that. Okay, I'm understanding the process. I'm getting it a little bit yeah. better. Um, I got on the phone just to understand what they're going through and things of that nature. Okay, this works. And then down the way, Steve Train came, you know, and yeah. then... At that point, you know, we considered not joining us. Like, hey, because I think at that point, he even told us, I think you guys are doing better than I am at this point. Yeah. Uh, I was like, you guys should probably do, do it on your own. Um, but he was just an amazing seller. I was like, nah, like, I, w- I want to be part of it. And he has, Steve taught us so much, right? And we yeah. wanted some operational experience, too. Because yeah. he's, you know, operationally, he knows a lot, too. Yeah. So we wanted a little bit of sales and more operations because we were growing really fast. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's easy to, uh, especially when you have, I mean, you get to a point of uncontrolled growth. It, uh, there's so many, it's like you have an old car, right? And then you change the tranny on and you put a performance transmission on it or, you know, it's performance engine on or whatever. Like the other parts are not going to hit, you know, keep up, right? You're going to have to swap those two as well. Right, and, right. and as I, I think, as we start, you know, adding things to, to the business, like, oh shit, we forgot about the bottlenecks on Dispo now, mm-hmm. uh, you know, or, or how do we, how do we do a better job of pre-qualifying leads? So we have, you know, more efficiency and effectiveness on the, on the acquisition calls, you know, that right. sort of thing. And I think it's a lot of stuff that really comes uh, from being in this space, right? We can read it, we can theorize about it all we want, but at the end of the day, until you're, you're actually doing this stuff, like yeah, that's that's when it really you know comes in and hits. Um, I made a point of uh, of running leaner. I, I tried the you know the whole big uh, you know the thousand you know people in the, in the team you know stuff and and um, and and it just didn't like b- because of a lifestyle that I wanted to have right. It wasn't. It wasn't in alignment, so um, I dialed it back, and we have a pretty consistent flow. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty healthy and whatnot. But I made um, I made a, a point out of running. I, I call it less business, more profits. Lean, effective, strategic, and simple. Right, less. Um, so if I if I like if I can bring that into the business and work the systems that way, right? Plug the you know the people that I need to plug into and run it that way. Like it makes. Um, it makes sense. I know there's going to be a high degree of accountability. There's going to be, you know, easiness of flow. Uh, and when you're hitting it the way that you was, you know, started hitting it right out of the gate, I mean, it can be difficult to to say no, right, to opportunity, to say no to to stuff like that and have the conscious awareness that, okay, cool, let's, you know, we have to tap into people who are already going through the process. Right. So so it's incredible you guys did that, you well, know, I early on. I think the same on. thing. We have that conversation. We're like, I think he never wanted any employees. He wanted to stay lean. Um, I'm the one that wanted to grow it bigger. Yeah. But even during that time, like we realized that, you know, the more we grow it, the more money we need to make. I think at this point, it's too late to turn back, right? Yeah. You know, we've kind of created a monster. But the reality is also kind of even with the promotions world, when I first started doing it as a one man team, I was making pretty good money. Yeah. Um, but I was never going to grow to a million dollar business by myself. Yeah. That's just not going to happen, right? And I think with real estate, it's the same thing. Like, you know, I can make a million dollars by myself, but we're never going to turn into a $10 million plus yeah. business as a one man team. So it's kind of right now the goal is can we grow it into the ten hundred million dollar category and for that we do need a lot of people yeah and I think kind of that's the road that we're on now is like how do we keep growing it how do we create creating bigger de- departments like dispositions team that we're building out the acquisitions team and kind of doing that yeah. that's the other thing like we never had a dispositions team right like yeah. our team was just really good at acquisition so it was like yeah. hey I don't need this ball send it to Alex Wilkins they'll they'll sell it yeah uh, send it to Spencer they'll sell yeah. it yeah whenever Spencer buys it. half of her stuff yeah <laughs> yeah yeah right so, <laughs> so we just never yeah. bothered so it's like hey yeah. why build a team when when we don't need it right like mm-hmm. You know, and kind of for him, he's always worried about what's coming up the road. I was like, dude, like, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. Like, yeah. I don't need to worry about a problem that isn't here yet. Yeah. But he's always looking. I was like, I'm telling you, like, we're going to run into it and we're not going to be able to sell these deals, which eventually did happen. I was like, okay, yeah. it's a problem now. Let's solve it now. Like, let's figure it out. One one thing one of my one of my first mentors ever told me was like, whenever whenever you do something new in the business 
And you just, you know, think about not, how are you, how can you not do that again? How can you not do it again? Yeah. Like, for example, if I'm going to dispo a deal, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, go through a process of documenting, reverse engineering everything, you know, after I went through the process. And, and really, I mean, that helped out because I started doing that years ago, right? Before I even had, like, the, the beginnings of a business. And just document, okay, cool. I mean, I would, I would f like, I had no employees and I would think, like, in my head, okay, I have an employee, I gotta explain this to them. And I would just kind of, you know, create the protocol. And I got used to that kind of stuff. And, and, and uh, I mean, that goes a long way when you're when you're delegating and trying to elevate from that stuff. Right. Next thing you know, you plug somebody into it, and then you you throw them a, you you throw them a process, not not just you know. Right, right. You know, are you guys doing that kind of stuff? So we we did a lot of Loom videos. I was doing a lot of Loom oh, videos for a while. Loom. I was yeah. just on Loom and just like, hey, this is how we're doing this. This is how you do this. Yeah. Um, but kind of even for a disposition process, like I just bought David Old's program and I went through it myself. I was like, <clears> this explains a lot of the shit that I would explain <laughs> a lot better than me. I was yeah. Like, boom, here you go, bro. Like, yeah. I need you to watch need, this. I need to watch half the day. And then half the day we're actually gonna do it. Then yeah. hey, I need you to watch these videos. And then half yeah. the day we're actually gonna do it. Then just all all week yeah. like that, right? And then it goes to actually plugging in on the phones and doing what they have to do. Yeah, I, I think we learned even during the promo days that you know don't reinvent the wheel. If yeah. somebody's already created a process, yeah, just do it better. Yeah, it's yeah. like Apple. You know, like they don't yeah. really create anything; they just make everything better. Yeah, and I think so. Like you know, somebody has a disposition program there. Let's get yeah. it. And we I, that's one thing we don't mind paying people for processes. You know, we've done like, you know, EOS training. Yeah. We've done it all. Like, because if somebody has a good process, let's get it. Let's see how we can fine tune it. Dude, I'm telling you, like, even if, if, if whatever you pay for gets you one deal or two deals or, or increases that bottom line by 3%, 5% or whatever, like, you're looking at a big win. Yeah. yeah. Like, we do it's, mentorships. Yeah. Like somebody's like 30K for a mentorship. I was like, well, if I get one more deal out of it, yeah, like, it's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> it's going to pay itself. We're masterminds, you know? Right, like, yeah. Like so we're not thing. afraid to kind of go spend uh, 30K on a mastermind. Yeah. David, David Olds, he's a savage, man. He's a, he's he's in family mastermind, too. We're, we're uh, A couple of weeks, we're going to be up in Tampa. Um, but yeah, like, for example, like going back to the networking portion of it, mm -hmm. like, it's important to be, like, I, I, I used to have a stigma against that kind of stuff. Like, no, why would I pay to be, like, for, to learn? I can go to YouTube. Like, right, uh, right. I mean, well, there's there's a ton of information on YouTube, but it's not, it's like a broken box of Legos, mm -hmm. right? It's all over the place, one. Um, two, you don't have that uh, that that, um, that personal relationship with people, and it's really not the info itself. It's, you know, being in the room and the possibilities that happen. Like right now, for example, there's three of us in this room, right? right. There's four conversations that are happening, not just three. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's... We there's you know three human beings, but then there's a four collective here that we can start talking about stuff and they come up with ideas that were necessarily not wouldn't happen if it was just you two or us two. You know what I mean? Right, right. So that happens in networking, and I think that's that's like one of the things that's often overlooked. It, it's we come in, or I used to come in into you know with the idea that I already knew stuff, and I was like I'm gonna sit down and then whatever. And when I started walking out of those rooms and my my fucking head was spinning, mm -hmm. like oh wow, like that's insane. And now I have the you know the relationship behind it. Like, dude, it's it's incredible. I think like stuff really started moving for me when I tapped into, uh, you know, power networking. Right. right. Yeah. Well, even the the group that we met at, you know, just last week. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's probably been like other than a couple of big events that we went to to support friends. Um, we haven't been to that many. I think that's probably like yeah, just, you know, under five that we've went to. Yeah. And already just we went to two of those and we've learned so much or yeah. kind of networked with you and stuff like that. So I, you know, I see like that door opening a lot more, being able to build those relationships and learn about more stuff. Yeah. You know, we, we dabbled in commercial. We want to go bigger on that. We've already done a couple of those deals and, yeah. you know, those. You talk to John? Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, the guys, are set. yeah. He's, he's, so it's just like a lot of that stuff, yeah. you know, as, as we build our rental portfolio, we're going to talk to like Zach, you know, maybe. And stuff yeah. Like that. We're going to have to, you know, those opportunities, being able to have those phone numbers and call are, are going to be really big. And and the crazy thing is like, I, I used to, uh, I don't know, and, and like my, my background is a very humble background. I grew up in a mobile home, you know, type of deal. So my mentality wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that stretched. My 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 financial thermostat was, you know, really set to a to you know not achieve for a lot, right? Yeah. Um, but I, and and my thing, my stigma was like um, anybody who's making it, anybody who's doing well, anybody who's rich, you know, they they're they're coveting all this information, they're coveting all the opportunities, and they don't want to share. Like, dude, it's I couldn't be farther from you know. I couldn't be more wrong right. about that. You go to these rooms, these people want to like, hey, how can we collaborate? How can we make more of this dope shit happen? Right, right. Uh, and that to me was like, it really broke my 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 paradigms in such a cool way um, that we do it all the time. Like now it's it's okay. I mean, we go out for coffee or, or meet up for lunch or whatever. You're hanging out. I had a couple of these guys at my birthday party and at the birthday party, like 
you know, deals were happening. Right. It's like, oh, listen, I think I have this deal coming up. Like, all right, cool, let's talk about it and then make the connections. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yep. But it becomes one, you know, part of life, you know, the stuff that you do um, as opposed to to kind of forcing that, uh, you know, that uh, that opportunity to kind of show up for you. But it's because you're putting yourself in the right rooms. You're right. putting yourself and in, in intentionally, right, in, in the middle of those crowds. And, and like that's... That's a game changer. And I even think. like one big thing, like, you know, I was kind of being like, poor me when I was talking to uh, Zach, <coughs> one of the first events. And he, uh, I was like, oh, like, you know, hey, like, thanks for inviting us, him and Lori. And it's like, we never get invited to this stuff because nobody knows who we are. And he's like, well, what do you mean? Well, like, you know, I never get invited. I'm like, well, why aren't you trying to get into them? Yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, good point. <laughs> yeah, why, why aren't you making calls or showing yeah, up? We were. Yeah. We were kind of sitting here like, well, nobody ever invites us. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> nobody calls me. But like, yeah, like, we have to, you got to reach out sometimes, right? Yeah. Like, hey, like, you know, how do I get into that group? How do you know? Yeah. Out? And I think, yeah, that's been a big thing that we're going to make part of our routine. You know, one thing we were telling you earlier is, um, you know, we're workaholics. We're that we're the grind mode kind of guys. Yeah. Which, you know, I enjoy. Like, I don't do it because I have to. Like, I truly, I think Jason does. I like going into the office. Like, yeah. I like waking up, going to the office. I don't mind working 10 hours a day. You know, it's better than being at home. <laughs> I had I had my early retirement where I didn't do anything for a while. Yeah, I started flipping right. Oh, you so had I, you had a taste of that then. Yeah, yeah. I took kids to school. My wife worked. I just stayed home. I still made money. Yeah, but it was like you know he was running yeah. it, and I was kind of like, well, what am I going to do next? And eventually, I realized well, I got to do something, right? Yeah. But um, just getting out there and doing stuff, we enjoy the grind mode. But the problem is with that is like sometimes we don't want to leave the office. Like, yeah. We get so caught up in the day to day. Putting Dude, out fires. It, like, I, gotta help I left at 10 p.m. last night from this place. Yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, it house, happens, right? Sometimes you just got to do a trench work. Year, Tuesdays are all the office day. Mm. So no matter what, every Tuesday we're going to leave the office. Even if it's to go down the street and use our laptops at like yeah. a cafe. We're going to step <clears> out of the office and do stuff like this. Uh, we were at one of the rentals today that we're going through an eviction process. Um, like Eric Sage, I met him at the event. Like yeah. I on a one hour call. He's coming Thursday to our office. Yeah. Like, you know, networking and stuff like that. So, um, Oh dude, pick his brain. Dude, the guy has an incredible way of structuring deals. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's like, 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 my brain was spinning. I was like, okay. Yeah. Wait. Like <laughs> you tell me, I was like, you're writing a lot of numbers. What? Right now, Can we write it down on a board or something? <laughs> yeah. This loan pays that loan. <laughs> yeah. Wrap around that. And yeah. Get, then and you, you have a note. You can double the cash flow. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. But yeah, he's coming to the office Thursday. So that's great. But yeah, yeah. Tuesday, Tuesdays are of the office. And that's going to, yeah. I think that's going to help us a lot to get out of our little bubble, yeah, talk yeah. to more people. So, you know, invite us on Tuesday. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done, dude. Um, yeah, I have, um, I segment my, my week in a couple of different things like content, you know, on Mondays and, and then uh, Tuesdays, I usually have ops meetings and, and I do morning huddles with my teams uh, every morning, but, but you got to find, you know, places where you can, uh, one focus on on you know I have focus time. I, I mean in my calendar it really pops up as focus, right? Focus on whatever the fuck I want to focus on, right? But it's focus. It's just segmented. Nobody can book anything there. Yeah. It's kind of like my 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 catch up, you know, time and and whatnot, right? Uh, I have you know those, those those sections there, and then I also book time with like go have you know lunch with you know friends from high school and and whatnot. Like we have standing you know lunches just to, because you have to reset, man. You have to. Um, it's, we, it's easy to be a workaholic when you're in alignment with, with purpose, when you're in alignment with the, you know, where, you know, the impact that you want to create or, you know, your vision, right? Uh, you know, whatever that is. And, um, it's easy to, to, to work, you know, 14, 15, 16 hour days and, and then just like, you know, don't feel it really like, right, because right. you're, you're excited about it. Uh, but it's, it's also on the long run, right? Like one thing that, you know, we've, we've, I'm sure you guys have seen it too, is like, you have to, you know, disconnect a little bit and find that counterbalance in certain places. And I think having, you know, spots like that, like that Tuesday where you guys get out of the office and then kind of refresh. I mean, that's, it's yeah. important. 100%. It's important. Yeah. I think something else we realized is like, you know, like, you know, I always tell people like, it's not surgery. We're not, you yeah. know, we're not saving lives. Like it yeah. can wait. Yeah. So I think both of us, you know, for the most part, like we don't work on weekends. Yeah. Like, our, our team doesn't work on weekends. Yeah, yeah. I think when we first started, we were going to the office on Saturday, making calls. And he's like, oh, you know, when you ask people, like, should I call on Saturday? Yeah, never miss an opportunity. Like the reality is it can wait. Yeah. You know what? Like there, there has to Let's be. catch like, Monday. We work pretty hard. <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, sh the title company's closed. No, ain't nobody closing on Yeah, Saturday. you're not going to do, you're not going to do a lot. Maybe, so, I like, mean, maybe you can get a signature on the contract. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but um, for the most signed. part. And you know, the guys do make calls. I mean, if there's somebody's really to sign, we're going to yeah. get the signature, right? But, yeah, but that's why we build the business, right? Yeah. Like you want the company to be running, not, not necessarily you running twenty four seven. Right. So. Yeah, he he goes mountain biking almost every Saturday and Sunday morning. Dope. Yeah. You know, I'm at the farmers market with my family. I do family stuff on the weekends and kind of avoid calls on this. Yeah. It's just it's super urgent. Yeah. So that's kind of where we disconnect a lot is on the weekends. I think my my guilty pleasure is binge watching like Netflix on Sundays with my <laughs> wife, dude. Is like like just <laughs> like yeah. 
<laughs> just like spread out, you know, spread up on the couch and, and doing yeah. that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's fun. Um, so now, I mean, you guys have crushed it on the wholesale side. I mean, obviously you start building a portfolio. Uh, you figure out the ins and outs of the acquisitions, the marketing. I mean, it's like second nature to you guys, right. um, which I think it's it's like your guys' X factor, right? And now you're moving into uh, into another venture called the Flip Machine where you're going to be dispoing, partnering up with a lot of people throughout the country to dispo and sell their deals, right? right. Uh, break that down for me. So pretty much, kind of, I was talking to Sergio about it. I was like, hey, like, we need to build our disc ball, right, for us. Because we're doing a nationwide <clears throat> PPC now. Yeah. So, right, so we're getting deals in Georgia, Florida, and Arizona, and Texas. Um, but mostly Georgia and Florida and AZ, right? All PPC. So we need to learn how to dis- disc ball these deals. Yeah. So you've got Investor Lift, right? We're using that. And we're we're sniping buyers as well, putting um, pulling them from prop stream, reaching out to them, trying to build relationships pretty much. When I told Sergio, I was like, hey, look, um, seen spencer caldwell's uh his business model it makes sense right um so like you see all these deals that like i'll literally get the same deal 10 times in my yeah. inbox right yeah and when it's in town and and so what what i know spencer does is like hey like what i saw that worked well is like hey he sends it out for what you got it for he charges a 1500 dollars broker fee right, right. whatever that but that feels like hey let's do that on the on the national level right it's yeah like, hey we're not adding anything. It's like, hey, wholesaler, what is it doing? You, you, yeah, what do you want for it? Great. Hey, we charge a three k flat fee dispo. Yeah. Um, we'll bring you all offers, any and all offers. Um, we'll know within twenty four to forty eight hours if you have a deal or not, right? Yeah. You, you're you're talking about not doing that twenty thousand dollar markup on deals. Yeah. Like, so, okay. so, so pretty Dude. much, I think it kind of gives people. Like, you know, I, I think that's what gives wholesalers a bad name, right? Because yeah. like everybody's chasing, uh, daisy chaining them, and I know like guys are, and I understand, I hundred percent understand, like. Everybody's trying to make money, but I think it puts a bad taste in people's mouth, yeah. especially when the buyer goes to signing and he sees all these assignments. Yeah. Right? And it's happened to us. We've had deals that we sold and it was like six you look, assignments. You on look it. at the settlement statement and they're like yeah. 5K, 3K, 10K. <laughs> oh, we, we've yeah, seen yeah. it. Yeah, oh, shit. Like, that was my first. That was my first wholesale. Uh, my first flip. I bought it from a wholesaler. Yeah. Uh, wholesaler, and and that's how I found out what wholesaling was actually. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck am I paying for here? Right. <laughs> like, right. What is this craziness? So, um, w- which is not uh, which is not bad in a sense, but I, I I think it just leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. So it's like, yeah. hey, look, f f that. I tell them, hey, let's just say, what are you looking to get for this property? Great. Like we're gonna send it out. I'm gonna field you all offers. Yeah, it's, it's like, hey, bro, n- this is yeah. what I got. Like, to sell hey, does that work? For, do any of these offers <clears throat> work for you? Yeah, great. We just charge a 3K dispo fee. Send us an assignment. We'll yeah. sign it. Boom. And same thing. Um, or eventually, when the market does turn around, do the same thing with the buyers. Like, hey, we're charging a $1,500 broker fee. Just know that we're never going to add anything on top of what this uh, yeah. th- this uh, wholesaler gets to sell the deal for, you know? Like, yeah. we'll be very transparent. And I think just trying to work it up on volume, you know, and I read yeah, the numbers. That trans- yeah, if you have a good system and, and working out volume, I mean, makes makes sense. Yeah, and yeah. That honestly, it was all, right. again, necessity. You know, we never did this, because it, when you're paying fifteen hundred dollars, three thousand dollars, it doesn't make sense like, to yeah. hire a team. To hire, it doesn't, well, I mean, you're gonna pay you're gonna pay it in commissions anyways, right? Like if yeah. you have a dispo rep, so that's why 100%. we never did it. Yeah. But when we did do a JV with somebody, they, they wanted 20, maybe more. 30, 50 percent of our deal. We didn't want to do business with them again. Yeah. Like yeah. we used them when we had to, but like yeah. I'm gonna go figure out a better way. If I'm gonna give yeah. you fifty percent of my deal. I'll be on Facebook. I'll be scraping numbers. Yeah. I'll be figuring out something to do, right? Well, well, you have it to the point where, okay, I may use it once or twice, and then that's it. They don't come, you well, know. And I think that's a big thing, right? Like, you'll use there, it there's no, you have to. Yeah, there's no... Uh, I'm probably not going to come back to Robert. Yeah, yeah there's, no, <laughs> there's no returning business. Yeah. yeah. So at that point, I think it's cheap yeah. enough where it's like, hey, Dispo has gotten harder. That's number one thing, right? Yeah. Because I wanted to just do a $1,500 fee. I was like, dude, like, we're literally cold calling... Um, there, there's yeah. a lot of effort behind it like you said right like yeah. when when you uh you bought the deal from carlos yeah, and yeah. then you realize like oh shit he's doing like there's a lot of marketing that goes into it there's yeah. training that goes into it yeah. the skill set required to close the deals and navigate you know through all these you know headaches and whatnot and you don't know that like, because all you see yeah. is uh all you 20K. see is a uh, 20k yeah. assignment of the hood but the reality is uh, like, he didn't net that you know he's yeah spent a lot of money on marketing and i remember they were here at the copper canyon building yeah and he was a really nice office like, yeah. you know he had a huge room full of people selling guys so yeah it, it, it was tough or whatnot but you know you don't see that at the moment right yeah it's like this guy's just making 20k but they're not i i think i think one thing that um that a, a lot of people are kind of pivoting pivoting into we're seeing more and more of um yeah i, I think it's that we're seeing it more and more of is people uh, you know wholesalers are becoming professional wholesalers yeah 
uh, instead of the, you know, the, the kind of fly by night, you know, type of, okay, deal here and there. And, and cause that stuff is not, you know, 2008, 17, 18, 19, you know, even 20 was, you know, was still happening. Right. Uh, but I mean, we, we hit a wall there where we had to like really just, okay, cool. You have to become more systemic, uh, you know, on the, your entire approach, like how you come about the entire thing. Right. Yeah. Otherwise it's not it, it, because now we got to hit volume. Now we got to push back and we have to analyze market. We have mean you know, markets. We have to really become, uh, um, proficient at the, you know the the whole you know building the business side of things yeah. to even have you know some type of, of um, you know leg up on the on everybody else making offers it just became so easy to make, make offers that the, the we sort of see a lot of mud in the uh, yeah well that was the birth space. of the flip machine was because we couldn't sell our own deals and yeah. no, you know the people that we went to before couldn't I like, sell I like how I like how you transition into that yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 savage no, 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 marketing <laughs> <laughs> marketing, marketing uh, 101. Uh, Boom. Uh, Did you guys catch that? <laughs> no but no, that was, that was kind of the Slick. first thing. That we couldn't yeah. sell our own deals. Yeah. And nobody else could sell our deals. So we had to learn how yeah. to sell deals, right? So as we started doing that, I mean, the first time we JV'd a deal was for a friend of ours because he was going through the same thing. He's like, dude, yeah. like, my business is going to go bankrupt. Like, yeah, I got yeah. two deals. I can't sell them. And we sold them for him. I think we put like, what, 30, 40K in his pocket? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there was in Texas and we had never done that, right? So mm. I started like... I, I was on Robert's Wednesday, uh, what is he, his, one of his webinars, and like, hey, this is the best way to do this. It's like, you know what, I'm going to fucking try this thing. I went through <laughs> it, I went through the whole process. I was on the phone for like eight hours with people, but hey, I found the guy. I was like, hey, can you walk it? Can yeah. you just go walk the property. I'm telling you it's a deal. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, was like, I promise you it's a deal. Guy walked it, he was like, I'll take him. Yeah. I'll, I'll take it. I was like, oh, nice, you know? But it, you know, people don't really look at emails as much anymore, right? Yeah. Like people look at, especially those investor left emails, dude. I'm sure you're probably getting 30, it, 40 it, of those it, Like that was, yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they caught my attention uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning and then we just started getting saturated with them. And I think yeah. it, like that's a story for, for well, a lot of people. It takes probably a good day of cold calling agents, calling investors, because we do all right on top of investor yeah. to get uh, some offers because yeah. our goal is for every guy to get three offers. Bro, we ha you have to be proactive on the on the dispo side too and just the acquisition. Mm -hmm. So we're taking like the strategies from lead generation. I've been doing this for, for I don't know, over a year now uh, from lead gen uh, over to the uh, to the uh, dispo uh, section. We have we have we have a pretty solid 21 day dispo process that we, it's very methodical. We go through the entire thing and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but uh, we start hitting, right? Like we get a deal through the pipeline something happens boom right away it starts you know the automation begins um and the process actually it's not all automated but you know the process with the people and whatnot um but the uh, the legwork on the dispo side like reaching out actually you know coming in picking up the phone and talking mm -hmm. uh yeah. your your you know a certain list of buyers that you have in there boom reaching out to them you know yeah. teeing it up for them um fine-tuning the buy boxes that they have all the time and that you know having ways of pulling it out hell we added another uh like little tweak and fine-tune to the process this morning during that call i mean uh I, I have um ops calls every tuesdays and that's where you go deeper into what's working what's not where can we fine tune and we're always like actively just kind of playing with the uh, nuts and bolts of the company yeah. um and but it's an ongoing thing like you start finding out these things as you go through the process and understand like oh shit that's really where the money is mm -hmm. right. like and that's where you don't you don't have to kill yourself but right. you know you let the machine actually do the machine stuff well right. i mean that's what saved our business <clears throat> i mean after everything kind of crashed you know, if we hadn't learned how to dispo, yeah, we'd still be, you know, sitting here like figuring out, like we probably would have went out of business. Yeah, and it was kind of a key of kind of learning how to do it. Yeah, but it is a lot of work. I think we put as much effort in selling a deal now yeah. that we do in kind of acquiring it. I, I, one of the things that I learned early on, and absolutely, I completely agree with that. One of the things that I learned early on was uh, your your seller, your buyers list is your holy grail, right? Like in your business, right? I mean, I, I, I like to kind of tweak that a little bit and, and like your dispo process is really your holy grail. Because yeah. it's not just about the buyers list that you have now, it's how you grow that list consistently, mm -hmm. right? Because how, how, how does that number or that level, the number of opportunities keeps getting, you know, bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and you, I mean, again, do it system. I'm big on systems and, and process is yeah. like it's and it's changed right since yeah. the last year until now yeah oh dude difference. i mean yeah i mean you know say it as a joke right but like july 15th last <laughs> you know that's like i can remember the time where i looked at my whiteboard i was like fuck yeah. a lot of those deals are going down the yeah, yeah we got we got wiped <clears> out man we had a million down in the, the pipeline and it was a june july and completely within one week like it went yeah. to, to zip yeah um, we had to retrade with some people um tried to make those work um, but the reality is I think 90% of our deals got canceled out. Yeah, that point. it was similar for us. And we haven't gotten to that number again, like since then, to that volume. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because we were locking stuff with, you know, 
uh, six months before pricing, and and I mean, it was just. And that was another thing that the issue that we had with even our sales guys, right? Like, they were able to lock up things at you know, you know, 70, 75 percent <coughs> things of that nature, and would still be getting 80, 85 percent, yeah. right? Um, and it was really hard for them to understand that. Dude, that is not going to fight. Okay, <laughs> we're locking them up at 70%. We still can't even sell them at 75% yeah. anymore, right? Okay, now we're locking up at 60%. Dude, I'm still like barely, we're selling like anywhere between 60 and 65. So it's like nothing. So now, you know, you have to really lock these. these like we have to go deeper. Like what? 60, I can't, I wish we could tell you otherwise. But. Yeah, and uh, mentally, I think a lot of the guys didn't believe it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like. I just don't see it happening. So, you know, they were afraid to go that low. Yeah. yeah. They thought they're going to get hung up on. Yeah. 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 I mean, fear of rejection, it's a natural, it's a real thing, right? Yeah. But no, I think it tested a lot of people. I, like, I know it tests actually, you know, my, my acquisition, I pivot the design in my acquisitions team mm -hmm. because of that same, same transition. I mean, it just, it mind fucked, uh, you know, some of the, some of the guys. And then it was just, you know, people fell off the, uh, the, the team and that sort of thing. And it's like, man, okay, I got to do something different. And that's how I ended up with, you know, 95% of my team. And I say 95 because one person is in town, which is Renee, my right hand dude. Um, but he's, uh, other than him, everybody's virtual, including the acquisition guys. Gotcha. Um, but, um, the one thing it's interesting, but one thing that I found out is like, um, I, I've been, you know, kind of building these relationships. I bring my, 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 my cold callers. They're, they're part of like the family team, right? It's like, we have that personal connection. We have that, like, they know they're part of the company. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, like, I don't see them as laptops and, or, you know, they, we actually, you know, jump on meetings and how are you doing at a personal level and that sort of thing. So, right. so they're valuable. Right. And, and, you know, the, the word gets around. So we, we, I, I brought a, um, um, a couple of people into the acquisition role for that. And, and they started learning just kind of the conversations. And I think one thing that I found out is that there's no, um, you know what you said right now about being afraid to load that uh, or to drop that low anchor, mm -hmm. low, low offer. It's because they understand the market. They understand the, the economic system here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, shit, that's way too low for the house. But if you go to somebody in the Philippines, you, I mean, if you have a $100,000 home, like it, it might as well be, you know, a hundred millions, it, it, right. you know, a hundred million dollars. It's it, like the, the numbers don't, it's just zeros. Like it, they don't have that emotional attachment to it. Right, right. Um, and they were dropping, you know, just low anchors left and right, like boom, boom, boom. It was like, oh shit. And then we started seeing that, you know, some of us, those stuck and, or we, we got really good negotiating starting points. Mm -hmm. Um, and it panned out, you know, it's panned out well so far. Okay. I closed a couple of uh, deals, my VAs and, and my, my, my pay structure changed too. So my margins went up. Mm -hmm. Um, they're making really good money based on, you know, Philippine, uh, Filipino, um, um, economic system and, and, uh, and, but it pans out like, right, right, it, right. yeah, it's just, you know, part of that, that pivoting. Um, I kind of feel like I went on a tangent there, but if it was like, it was important to just kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to mention yeah, it. We tried the virtual route. I mean, we had the, the, the cold callers, stuff like that, but we tried virtual salespeople and, um, I don't know, I, maybe I'm old school. Yeah. I just like having people in the office. Yeah. And I think we just haven't been able to master the whole virtual training, being on zoom and stuff like that. But yeah, it's something I know some people are doing with great success. One, one thing one thing that helped me is, I mean, I treat my team like I treat my coaching programs. So literally, like we have modules, we have, you know, onboarding protocols and processes and stuff like that. They go in, they start going through, like, like if whenever you buy a course online and then you right. go through the modules, you go through, like that's exactly what they go through. And then we have coaching calls, we have that continuing, um, you know, kind of education going on. Right. But it, it's the, it's the same framework, different content. Uh, and content and then the context is a bit different right but but the framework is very similar so like actually um, I have I have column products right but if, for example I have an onboarding um, and training sequence for acquisitions I have another onboarding and training sequence for dispositions another one for lead uh, lead managers another one for cold callers mm -hmm. so so we give them access to those trainings they come in and then they go through that process and we just kind of um, you know, recap on stuff during uh, during the week on a weekly basis. Whenever right. we have the office meeting, and and I mean, it's turned out well. Uh, one thing that they're doing too is is um, they they they're not too far from each other in the Philippines, mm -hmm. so they'll do uh, like group building activities and whatnot. Like they they just I rent I got them an Airbnb last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, they all went to this one place and then like, partied it out for the weekend and then they just came back and ready to work on Monday. So. You, know, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But I, I think there's ways that we can come in and, and, and tweak it. And I, I didn't think this model was going to work for me. I, I really had to do it because I had a shit ton of leads mm -hmm. yeah. and I didn't have anybody to plug them right. um, plug them into when, when my, my, my acquisition team just kind of, you know, 
uh, get you know through in the towel because yeah. of the adjustments that happened back, uh, last year. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna get this guy. I'm gonna get him really good at um, just understanding and, and sending out wholesale offers. Anything outside of that, just tag me on it. Okay, if it's a creative financing deal, I'll work it. And and so I got him really good at that one thing, and then he understood how to articulate the uh, the creative financing, he the innovation, you know, the rest of the stuff. Yeah. Um, not necessarily structure it. But if they were open to that conversation, my my conversations went from, you know, having to do 100 a week to, you know, handling five right, uh, right. because it was doing the bulk of it. So that kind of, you know, panned out. Um, but yeah, there's so many different ways that, that we, you know, we can come in and then just kind of, you know, tweak and adjust as we go through that process. Um, I, I mean, big, big respect for you guys. I mean, just, you know, coming coming out of the. Uh, uh, you know, with the you hitting the floor running is, is not an easy thing. It's not an easy fit. Uh, fit. Uh, it doesn't matter how resourceful you are, really. Like, if you have a ton of cash, because I've seen a ton of people throw a ton of cash into the business, like right out of the gate, and still not make it. Right. So it's not that. It's really, you know, it's it's. I, there's there has to be a a um, a collective right there on on when it comes to talent, when it comes to tenacity, when it comes to the audacity of following that vision yeah. and just being on the same page. Which it's huge to to have partnerships that last more than a decade, yeah. and then across different verticals. So don't big get, don't big get me props. Wrong, was, the last year I was questioning it. You know, last year <clears> I, was, yeah. I, I told them because we were dumping money back into the business every month. You know, like yeah. August, September, October, November. Yeah. It's like, Started questioning, like, what the yeah. man? Are we in the right business? You know, should we be doing something else? Right? Like, <laughs> I've seen I all- really questioned it, and then I'm, I'm thankful that we had mentors and collective genius like um, um, Barnes, um, Kava, Frank Kava, all those guys. Frank's yeah, Frank's savage too. He is, and yeah, you know, just looking minute. at their operation, right? They're like, they, they feel like they're Insane. light years ahead of us, right? Insane, dude. That, just something yeah. that that really hit me is when, when just talking to him. He's like, Jason, like. It's gonna take you three to five years to stabilize your business, bro. Yeah. He goes right. He goes anytime before that, you're just gonna have ebb and flows. You're gonna have an amazing quarter. You're gonna have a horrible quarter. Yeah. Um, you're gonna have quarters where you're barely gonna make enough to payroll that week. Like that's yeah. what I went through, right? Yeah. And um, he goes, just know that it's very normal to feel the way you're feeling right now. And when I, when when he told me that, it just gave us confidence. Like, all right, we're we're on the right path, man. Shit, <laughs> shit's tough right now, but we're gonna figure it out. Yeah. It got scary. We we dumped a quarter million, I think, the last quarter. Yeah. It's because we didn't fire anybody. We actually hired more people. We brought in more sales training. We brought in like Rich to teach us innovations. We brought in like just a lot of different tools for the guys because we had to retrain yeah. them and change that mindset, right? Yeah. And then keep the office open, keep the payroll. And then we're seeing like other people in the industry were like, oh, we're doing this now. We're, yeah. We're doing this now. Oh, dude, so many, so many shiny objects have, you know, and, popped up over the last we six like, months. Like maybe we should do that. Like, you yeah. know, we were like really questioning it. But like, you know, kind of talking to people, we realized like, you know, wholesaling works. Yeah. We figured it out. We're still learning, but like it works. We just got to stick the course. You, you know, you know where I get that? And I think we all get it, right? But I get that on the education side. Yeah. Like I see, I see, you know, coaches and then doing certain things and, and on the marketing side and, and whatnot. I was like, oh, maybe I should be doing that. I should be doing that. Like on the wholesale side, I feel like I got, okay, cool. This is my process. I like it. I'm, I'm happy. This is like, I got this dialed in. Right? right. But anytime we're, we're, we're building something, we don't have it to the point where it feels good yet. Like it's easy to fall into that, you know, shiny object syndrome and, yeah. and then just, you know, get distracted. Next thing you know, you're like fucking $200,000 into it. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that yeah. was a wrong turn. 100%, 100%. <laughs> but we stuck it out, and I think we're happy. We're nice. back in the right direction. You know, January was really good. February is going good. March is going yeah. awesome. And cause it, we know we're still new, and we're still going to learn. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I you know, we'll probably stick to this. And that kind of thing we were talking about offline was, um, you know, we, we made that kind of mistake where we got into the rentals, which I don't think we should have. We started doing a lot of flips. Yeah. We shouldn't have done that either. For this year, we're just going to wholesale. We're yeah. not going to do anything else. We're not going to yeah. flip. We're not going to do development. We're not going to do Airbnbs. We're not going to do No shit. matter how sexy it looks. Yeah, I don't <laughs> care. Like, if it's $100,000, we're leaving on the table. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not what we're doing this year. Yeah. So we're just going to wholesale until we build the business where we need to be. Yeah. And then once we're there, maybe we'll kind of look back. Okay, where, where are we doing? Cause people are always where like, can oh, we add opportunity yeah, to it? Yeah, it's always like, you're leaving money on the table. You're leaving money on the table. It's like, well, maybe we are. Am I? Yeah. Like, am I? I mean, if you have that that, that consistency, that steadiness. And for us, we're we're trying to get to four or five hundred a month consistently. Yeah. um, With our entire team operating it. So, yeah, I I, I think we'll be there, um, you know, in the next two quarters, three quarters. I mean, um, we're heading in the right direction. I know that. Yeah. um, You know, but 
We just want stability, but obviously, you know, with market fluctuating, things of that nature, yeah. it scares people. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, it's it's uh, steadiness and consistency is a lot more important than those spikes, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. especially when you're thinking long term, like you guys are. Yeah. 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 Um, so give me uh, before we start wrapping up. Um, I don't know. Give me um, right now. I mean, with with the flip machine, you have you have the um, your big thing is going to be dispo. So you can you know actually JV partner up with other people. Um, give me maybe two or three things that you feel are vital to to having a good dispo process right now um i would say definitely um so i i mean our process right now right we, we get a deal we underwrite it first off yeah right and it's like hey this is what i potentially see cash buyers in there are buying for yeah. right um we underwrite it right away too um i would say really good f- pictures really good pictures they matter now mm. more than ever and a lot of them um, number three. Do you guys do throw videos in there too? Videos, yeah. yeah. Videos definitely, definitely help out. It's like I just put a video up on my Instagram of a house I just walked the other day. Here. Yeah. People liked it. I was like, oh shit, you showed us the entire house. Um, four, knowing what's wrong with the house, and I think the big thing right now, flippers like the mechanicals, like hey, yeah. how's the electrical, the roof, and the AC. Right. That's like a big thing. I don't know why people used to ask for water heaters. Remember, I used to get that. I was like, how old's a water heater? How old's a water heater? <laughs> yeah. It's like, like eight hundred dollars. Yeah, fix, it's, a, eight hundred dollar fix. It's a water know. heater, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like a big. I don't know. <laughs> you want to shower with cold water? Yeah. It exactly. It was ingrained. It's like you gotta know if the water heater <laughs> yeah. works or not. I was like, all right. Deal man. breaker. Yeah. Uh, it used that. to be. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, well, anyways, another tangent, but I mean, we used to run off of check, you know, like checklists yeah, and you yeah. see something on a checklist, you just ask for it without any, you know, yeah. critical thought. Anyways, a hundred percent kind of that, um, that, and, um, just continually building out the buyers, um, continue building on buyers lists. Um, you know, I tell them, I call it like 75 hard for my guys. It was like, Hey, you need 25 cash buyers in every market. Um, you need 25, um, 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 buy and hold guys and you need 25 realtors that work with investors in every single market and no. and really it's by zip code right like my i have a guy um ren barlett and those guys i forget where they're hosting out of but they got 75 so they got 25 of those in each zip code that markets that they're in so like yeah their their dispo process is dialed in dialed and then you just got to keep working it i think yeah. another big thing is we we get three offers in every house even if they're bad offers like we need to know at least what are people willing to pay for this house. Yeah. We can always go back and retrade. Well, we'll we know it'll sell at three hundred. Yeah. So or, or just, we just get feedback to our acquisitions. Yeah. Guys. It's a good thing. It, it's a good learning curve. To, yeah. All right. It's like, hey, dude, look, okay, well, we locked this up for this. This is the feedback that we're getting. Let me know what you saw. What did you see that people aren't seeing here? Yeah, especially because you guys are national. Yeah. yeah. Right. So every market's different. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, there's deals like selling like in Flint, Michigan. Like it was like, hey, we got a house for a thousand for fifteen hundred bucks. I was like, wait, like, wait, wait, what? What do I want? Do I want that? Fifteen hundred dollars, <laughs> and we're looking at it, and yeah, like uh, these houses on the market, bro, are selling for twenty k. Like that's a yeah. FHA convention, a home purchase, and you're looking like cash buyers are buying in there for like fifteen hundred bucks, eighteen hundred. Yeah. So they do like. At that point, it doesn't really matter. You can't rehab a house yeah. for under ten thousand right? bucks. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you can't you can't buy a bathroom for that. Sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, uh, yeah. No, it's 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 crazy, but it's important to understand. And again, like it's going back to 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 uh, being more systemic, more systematic when it comes to the wholesale process. Like doing the research. I mean, tapping and like understanding different markets and then blowing it up, but blowing it up in a in the right way, right? And not right. just kind of like throwing marketing dollars all over the walls because uh, that shit's not working anymore. You used yeah. to. Yeah. And you. It used to work 100%, bro. Like I started, I started doing this in 2009, and and um, and I mean, it was so different. First off, we didn't have all the tools and the tech, and and you know, for the comping and all that stuff. So you have to, you have to really be creative and, and like build the relationships with agents if you got to deal like in the middle of you know, yeah. uh, wherever, right? Like it was really more of a people business back then, and I think. Um, you know, going door, you know, actually sitting down with sellers face to face. I was going on about 25 appointments a, um, a week face to face. So yeah. sitting down with for like five or six, you know, home uh, owners on a daily basis. Okay. Um, so that was, you know, that relationship building, having those conversations for an hour or two and all that stuff, like it was totally different, right? right. Like now it, it's, it, I mean, 80, yeah, everything's on the phone, right? Yeah. So it's just different, but, but, um, but, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, still like some of the basic original principles, you know, they, they carry on. Right. Yeah. So, um, awesome guys, man. It's, it's, it's an honor having you guys here. Uh, where can somebody get a hold of you? Maybe reach out to you if they want to JV with you guys, send you guys deals so you can dispo them. Uh, where's the best place to find you guys? So just DM me on Instagram. Yeah. Um, mine's is Jason ha- Flips. 
Um, J- at Jason Flips. J Y S E N, by the way. Yeah, J Y S E N. J Y S E N. Yeah. yeah. His mom wanted to spell it something different. Dude, I'm yeah. telling you, I can't spell it today. Uh, <laughs> totally jacked that up at the beginning. I was like, where the fuck well, did that worry, D my come mom from? Did too, bro. My mom yeah. Did too, <laughs> I told him, why did you just spell it J S O N? Dude, I have, I have a, my mom will call me my sister's name before she reaches like my name. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, Mine's but, I found Sergio. I found Sergio. On everything, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Yeah. Um, we also, right now, you can find us on the flip machine we have a facebook page that has you can post your own deals there yeah it's pretty much open for anybody and dispowithus.com dispowithus.com yeah. the flip machine on facebook yeah and then you guys' social media can you repeat those handles again uh it's i found sergio mine is jason flips jason flips yeah. got it we'll be sure to uh, put those on the show notes as well um so there's there's a couple of uh, this is actually my favorite question um i like asking this before we sign off but um i'll start with jason it's um if uh, if you were walking down the street and you ran into your 70 17 year old self what advice would you give that kid Learn and sell skills. <clears throat> oh, shit. Yeah. Learn You've been skills. thinking about that one for a minute, huh? Yeah, like, yeah. it was right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Learn, learn, learn how to sell. Um, yeah. You know, take a course. Get taught by anybody, somebody, right? Yeah. That's a skill that'll never go away. We're always persuading people one yeah. way or another, right? So, yeah. I'm not coercing people or anything like yeah. that, you know, but just, just learning sales. Like, yeah. I think that's an amazing skill. Like, you can never go wrong having that skill. Love it, man. Learn how to sell. And, uh, Sergio? Um... Tough one. Um, I feel like I started late in life. I'm 43, yeah. by the way. Yeah. No, I'm 46. Really? Oh, shit. 46. You're 46? I am getting old. See, I don't remember my age. Yeah, You're getting... 46 years old? Yeah. Dude, I thought you were like low 30s. <laughs> I thought so, I was the old one in the, in the room. So I'm, I'm I, 40. I started real estate <laughs> in my 40s. I yeah. actually started the promo world in my 30s, yeah. which is obscenely old to be an icon yeah. promoter, but it worked, right? Yeah. Um, crushed it. <laughs> so I'd like to say start real estate, but I don't know if like, you know, all the stuff I've learned throughout my life kind of got me here. Yeah. But I remember watching those old commercials with that old guy on the, uh, yeah. the, the Asian guy on the yacht. And yeah. all the girls in bikini, I don't know if you ever saw those. But he used to talk about like, you know, you can do real estate too and uh, have all the cheesy people with the checks. I learned to, you know, <laughs> buy money with no cash. Like, I thought it was a scam all the time, right? Yeah. Buy, buy houses with no cash, no money, no credit. You're a criminal, doesn't matter. Um, I used to watch them on infomercials because I'm old. <laughs> and uh, and I just kind of saw those. I remember thinking like, yeah, I should check that out, but I never did. Yeah. So now I'm here, you know, in my forties yeah. doing this. But I I do wish maybe I started real estate sooner because it's something that you can do at 18 years old. We have some young guys in our office that are. I have one guy. He's 18 years old. 100%. He moved here from Houston. No promise of a job. We pretty much told him if you suck, we're gonna fire you. Yeah. And uh, he's crushing it. He works like like crazy. This guy's gonna probably be something special. I mean. Yeah. But I wish I was starting at 18 years old. That's but I'm happy where I'm at. <clears throat> Life is good. That that's how I, I would have started with wholesaling too. Like before before I launched the the first business at 21, which had nothing to do with real estate. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that's huge. I think it, it's low entry barrier, right? Spe- like specifically the uh, the 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 branch that we're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of a lot can happen in a very short amount of time. Right. I don't I don't I don't know if it, if you do uh, know of anything else let me know but I don't know of any other um, opportunity out there that can really be leveraged like this and then give you that level of results you know right away right. I mean you have you know crypt, crypto and stocks and all that they're like if you hit it yeah. like one of those things like right? the lottery, huh? yeah yeah exactly so so I mean I don't know it's just call me crazy right but I'm I'm, I'm right there with you man um <clears throat> awesome man it's been a great great podcast thank you uh, guys it's uh, for the golden nuggets it's um, really cool to see again the trajectory everything that you guys have been able to put together in a very short period of time uh, and then taking that back to how long your guys' uh, uh, marriage has, <laughs> has been going on for so that's really really cool to see it's really refreshing so uh, again thank you guys for being here fam there you guys have it another episode of seal podcast stay focused you got this.